Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Tinnitus TV. Today I am talking to Ambrose Kenny Smith. You know, most musicians never get to be in one great band. Kenny Smith is in two at the same time, along with what he calls his main gig in Australian psychedelic rock gods King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. The singer, songwriter, and multi-instrumentalist also fronts the more rock and R&B oriented Murlocs. Between those two bands, he's releasing four, count them, four albums this fall. Three from the endlessly prolific Giz and the incredible new Murlocs LP, Rapscallion, a coming-of-age concept album about a teenage vagabond inspired by Cormac McCarthy and Kenny Smith's own troubled adolescence. Before heading out on tour with both bands, Kenny Smith and his cat got on the Zoom to talk about writing Rapscallion, memorizing all that music, where the Murlocs go from here. Enjoy. Good day. Hello, sir. How are you? Good, thanks. Just uh, in bed with my cat. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the cat's name? Cosmo. Cosmo, perfect. Uh, my cat's in the other room, unfortunately. Otherwise, we could let the cats talk. <laughs> uh, he's chill. He's, he's just going to fall asleep, I reckon. How are you right. going? So, so listen, uh, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me today. I know that you are busier than a one-legged man at an ass kicking. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I'm getting my ass completely kicked. Um, yeah, that's, that's all right. I, I leave, I go to um, LA on Monday. So I'm just going to, I'm just chilling around home today. Um yeah, just doing some stuff on the computer, really, and cleaning up my house and stuff, getting ready to bail. Uh, uh, yeah. And so you're you're gonna leave you leave your cat for like you could be gone for what a month, two months. Yeah, well, I'm gone for two months. Sorry, Cosmo. Oh, he's already he's he's had enough. There's too much yelling going on. I think he's about to bail. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so was it, was it somebody's grand plan that you would put out a new Murlocs album like two weeks before King Gizzard decided to start dropping three albums in a row or did that just like kind of happen? It just happened. Yeah. Um, Gizzard always is just crazy. Every time I'm like, you know, like a good year out, I'm like, all right, Stu or like whoever, like I've got this date, September 16th. Can you please just at least give me like, two weeks either side and um it's always like oh you know you know maybe two weeks one side you know not both you know you can never get a good like month window oh, but, um, yeah that's just the nature of it yeah and then like like obviously this rap scout album had been finished way before um any of these three albums from Gizzard sure. had been um but yeah, it's just the nature of it. No matter how much I organize something with Murlocs, Gizzard will just come out of nowhere with like a record of some sort. Um, so yeah, just used sure. to it really by now. Well, but on the I guess on the plus side, you sort of get to, you know, piggyback on each other. You know, people will be talking about all of them, you know. That's it's you know, yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, there's always a good way to look at it, I guess. Um <laughs> <laughs> That's when it's all happening. It's like, oh God, now all our fans like, you know, aren't gonna be able to afford to buy a Murlocs record when it comes out, you know, a week later from this gizzard pre-order. But like you said, it all it's all just it's all just hype, I guess, and just gets everyone. Yeah. Uh, but I think I think the fans will want them all anyway. And you know, for the yeah. people who are just, you know, more more Murlocs, they've already got it. It's you know, it's out of the way. Yeah. You're taking money out of Stu's pocket, you know. And totally <laughs> <laughs> doubt that but yeah no it all works out so it's um it's all within the same realm and yeah it's good it feels good to have this murlocs album out and to get a bit of sunlight before um yeah we drop these three gizzard albums <laughs> yes well i want to ask you a little bit about those later on but let's start talking about rapscallion which is obviously mm -hmm. your sixth album and and you guys really really i mean you know all of your albums have been good great even but you know you've really upped the ante this time around in terms of you know the the whole narrative aspect to this i mean it's like uh it's like a concept album do you do you how do you feel about calling it a concept album yeah it feels great it feels good to finally have a concept album um is that definitely... something you wanted 
Is that something you were yeah, eager to Yeah, definitely, without meaning to. I guess all the Murlocs albums have always sort of been pretty slapped together in a way. They were just like hmm. sort of mismatched and there's never been any concept of sort of just being like whatever songs we have kicking around and then I'll just like write whatever I'm feeling on the day or whatever for it. Um, but yeah, I guess, yeah, it feels good to like have a record that's really seamless and it's like, you know, sounds like it's all meant to be together, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, we're, we're, yeah we're, whereas in the past, it's sort of been, yeah, a sort of mixed batch. Um, but yeah, I think now since Bittersweet Demons um, and now this one, it feels a lot more concise and thought about. Um, yeah, and I'm just super proud of it. I feel like it's the best yet and it's going to be hard to top. Oh, definitely the best yet. I mean, did, did you did you uh, sort of have this plan going in or or did it just kind of materialize as you were, you know, writing? Um, it just sort of materialized as we were writing because my locks never get like a huge amount of time, obviously, because I'm so busy with Gizzard as like my full-time gig. Um, so yeah, whenever we do do murloc stuff i'm always just like trying to just you know get it going on the spot why the you know the inspiration and the energy and the the vibe is there to you know hit it while the iron's hot but i think this time you know sort of a blessing with the pandemic because we got more time to like you know callum came out of the gates and started sending me all the tracks for rap scallion we started the band with him writing the music and i'd write sort of lyrics and then the role sort of, you know, became more me writing the music and the lyrics and then the other guys writing music. And But I've always written the lyrics um, regardless. So I was kind of just had my hands full with um, after Bittersweet Demons. That was, you know, like 70% of sort of my piano-y kind of ideas. And I wanted to just sort of step away from the band of having to, I think I was just getting a bit tired of trying trying to hold the reins all the time because it's everyone's project in Murlocs, you know, it's not, I'm, you know, I keep it alive because I get a lot of creative um, joy out of it, um, being able to control it so much, but it's, it's just as much mine as it is theirs for the other guys. And um, yeah, I was just trying to encourage them all to write more songs. So I just wanted to go back to writing lyrics really because I feel like that's my strong point. And um, I was also wanting to contribute more on King Gizzard's stuff because I've been uh, neglecting that for a long time because of Murlocs, you know, it's sort of always like kept Gizzard as more much as my performing gig, you know, just that sort of side of it. And I also was just intimidated by all the Giz guys because they're all so freakishly good at music that I just could never and still can't keep up with them. Right. But, so I wanted to try and give it more of a crack and spend more time. And I guess that was the result of Omni and Gatherum. I got to have a few more, you know, foot, feet in the door and more input um, on that record. And I am now, like, moving forward, I guess. So, yeah, with the Murlocs doing this record and the future records, I'll hopefully just be writing lyrics and the other guys can write the music. Right. So, so with, with this one, though, did you, I mean, did it, did you start with just one set of lyrics uh, about this this character and then then that led to a second and a third or and a fourth or did you kind of with the first one go you know this is the beginning of, of a longer story that I think I'm going to tell I think um when I heard subsidiary I was like that's a sick like opening track I reckon to the album so and then I just started to listen to other tracks um because he was just sending me demos like really quickly all of a sudden he'd obviously been working on some for a while you know keeping them in his back pocket but he just started reeling them off and then before I knew it I kind of had, could sequence them all you know sonically and know how it was going to evolve I guess and then I just started to just you know come up with this idea in my head just solely through what I was listening to I think in the music it just sort of felt like it could to be this sort of rough like scuzzy you know feral kind of character like and the coming of age story and all that just made the most sense and I think subconsciously I loved you know a lot of movies like that like Stand By Me and The Goonies and all that kinds of stuff and I just read Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy and so all these different sort of like things where there was sort of like a younger character being you know influenced by older 
you know older people or whatever and that was a lot that was very relative to my upbringing as well I hung, I hung out with a lot of older people and um, had a lot of influence from a young age and saw a lot of things experienced a lot of stuff hung out in the streets a lot um, so yeah I guess there's a lot of rapscallion in me to a certain extent um, but yeah so I, yeah, I had a lot of fun writing it. I was giggling a lot of the time to myself, just sort of reminiscing about different things that I was taking from my own experience and then like enhancing it um, in, in Rapscallion's world. What what percentage is, is, is you? Um, I guess just like, you know, just like bobbing and weaving, dodging ticket inspectors to like, you know, just run-ins with general bigots and people of authority and just that want to make your life difficult for no reason hmm. um yeah just sort of all that those sort of elements um and you know like virgin criminals about him you know having his first bit of crime by stealing something and then getting into a scuffle with, and then shots are fired but you know my thought my I riffed off that from my experience of stealing something for the first time, which was just a chocolate bar or something. <laughs> so <laughs> I kind of like took all these little things and then just like amplified them into being a bit more extreme. And, you know, like then even like the tragedy of the love interest passing mm -hmm. away with overdose. You've, I've had friends that pass away from overdose and sort of been around those sort of different scenarios of people, you know, taking substances in the wrong way and um you know just general like uh you know your own sort of physical or mental abuse just from like bringing it on yourself I guess um yeah I sort of just have met a lot of people in my life through skateboarding I was a keen skateboarder most of my life so I feel like I've just come across so many different paths leading up until music and then um once I started like things st started taking off with the band of you know my world becomes a lot more sheltered you know people think we see and do a lot of stuff but we don't really get to experience a huge amount you know it's always pretty much just the green room and the, the highway um, and the hotel so I yeah it was nice to reminisce about how much freedom I had um especially in a time when like it was locked down and you couldn't go anywhere so it was nice to <laughs> True. Reflect that, you know, being able to just do whatever you want. Did you did you write them all in order? And and was there a lot of um having to, you know, go back and rewrite and change and edit? Because I mean, doing this kind of a big long form thing, it's obviously yeah. more detailed and more challenging than just writing an individual song off the top of your head. And you have to kind of, you know, make sure it all works and goes where you want it to go and yada yada yada. Yeah, I sort of, um, I can't really remember in what sequence, but I think it was pretty much from the start, you know, I built up the character in the first three songs with subsidiary ballerine, ballerina, and living under a rock, you know. So by those first three songs, you start to realise that the character is, you know, has no really idea of the world outside of what he's been brought up in and that that environment was, you know, is very recluse and isolated and you know sort of in this sort of small country coastal town unaware of the bigger and you know like the big world that surrounds him so he's just trying to get out of that and run away from being this sort of outcast in his community to then you know finding eventually his way in, into the city and and rolling with some other like vigilantes and vagabonds and other like people around you know similar to his age and older that are like you know start showing in the ropes of how to survive as an anarchist I guess um so yeah I think it was sort of just like like Royal Vagabond I think was one of the last to the piece you know I think around the three-quarter mark there was some holes to fill but um yeah I feel like the first batch was all pretty much there the first half seemed like solid and then the Luckily, all the rest just seemed to make sense in that second half to then into a nice finish with Growing Pains. I think Growing Pains felt like a perfect end of song. Do, do you um, think that, um, that uh, you could use this character, you could maybe do another album about what happens to this character later in life, or is that just sort of the end of him? I think it's probably the end of him. I feel like we just nailed it. 
And I feel like it's going to be very hard to top. Um, and, you know, like, it, I don't really know what else to, where to take this character, you know. By this point, he's already heading into his, like, you know, into his late teens, early 20s. And I feel like that's, well, that stuff kind of gets a bit boring. <laughs> I think it's more <laughs> exciting when you're, like, reminiscing about, you know, being a, you know, mid teenager or whatever, that's more exciting to me. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I think we also just sort of, yeah, I don't really know how to just um, revisit that because I feel like we just, I'm just super proud with what, how it turned out and what it is. And I don't really know how to, yeah, revisit it for a while. Um, we'll probably, I think we're just, we're just going to go back to doing what we do best, which is just sort of, I don't know just writing songs about just what's going on around us and just keep creating. But if that spark comes again and we can try and think of something conceptual, that'd be cool. But I just, at the end of the day, write like writing mostly and mainly about my own experiences. Um, that's why I tried to use some of that in Rapscallion. But at the end of the day, it was just, you know, projected in a not much more extreme sense. So I like sort of sticking sticking to my guns and staying true to myself because that's all the best and most sincere music that I can relate to is when, yeah, you talk only from your experiences, I guess. So. Yeah, well, fair enough. I mean, I, I, I you know, I was going to ask you, what do you do for an encore after that? Because it's, it's, you know, it's yeah, a tough, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, you're going to have to just start, it's going to be like some aliens or some sort of sci-fi thing involved, but <laughs> I think I'll just leave that to King Gizzard. <laughs> get enough out of writing um, fiction with Gizzard. Yes. Well, uh, so this seems like a good time to segue. Three albums coming out next month. I mean, that that is just that's mm. a tremendous amount of music. Um, how do you how do you pull how do you pull that off? I mean, that that just seems like such a, a huge amount of music to have to learn. You know. Mm. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, we're going yeah to LA on like next week before we start the tour and we're going to hopefully learn a few songs off Ice Death but um, yeah there's so much there I feel like we create so much all the time with such like you know in such a spontaneous way that like you never really think about how it's going to yeah translate live later in the sense we kind of just you know are just winging it and things happen so fast that a lot of the time I'm wishing I'm just setting up a, a camera of myself filming what I'm doing <laughs> so it make my life easier when I'm trying to go back to relearn everything um but yeah I feel like my brain's definitely getting to a point in life where it's starting to feel very overloaded <laughs> muscle memory is a crazy thing though so yeah, I don't know. I think one day we're probably just going to end up having to have like music stands and stuff, <laughs> like <laughs> someone in our ears saying like solo Ambrose or like <laughs> sing Ambrose or something. <laughs> yeah, but you'd have to have like reinforced music stands because the the book uh, the music book would be like you know this. Yeah, thing. yeah. You'd have to have people totally. turning the pages for Some you. A robot just being like crumbling castle and just like <laughs> taking out. Chapter 12, like page 18. <laughs> I think by that point, it would just be just impossible to try and do that stuff. But yeah, we're doing like four three-hour shows this tour. Um, me and Stu were laughing about it the other day just because, yeah, obviously he loves trying to just make it different sets every night. And yeah, yeah it's always very challenging and stressful, but like what, when you pull it off and you do it, it's always it's worth the re reward, you know, of the stress. But um, yeah, I don't know. This is just the what the band has become. So you just got to embrace it. And um, it's really, yeah, it is really nice and satisfying when you can, yeah, play all this music that you've made at such a like small moment in your life and then, yeah, it's nice to revisit it, like in all different circumstances, I guess. Yeah, and but, I mean, uh, there's so much good psychedelic rock out these days. I mean, you know, you guys and, mm. and the OCs, and I was just talking mm. to one of the Black Angels yesterday. I mean, there's just, you know, yeah, great. so much great stuff out now. Do you, can you explain that? Can you think of any reason why there's been this sort of, you know, resurgence uh, of, of, of psychedelic rock lately? 
Um, I feel like those bands you mentioned and ourselves have been doing it for a good, like, you know, 10 years mm-hmm. now. Sure, longer. you guys are the but, old um, guard. Yeah. Yeah, we're the, we're the, we consider ourselves the younger dudes compared to OCs and Black Angels, but now I feel like we're all just, you know, hanging out at the same RSL pretty much. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. I definitely, I don't know. I think just it's, it's just a combination of like who you who we grew up with at, at the time, the music we're listening to. A lot of my influence came from skate videos and like like minded friends through all that. Although none of the Gizzard guys were in that world, I think they just like got to listen and see a lot of this music from all of us hearing it from different outlets and avenues before other people. Um, but you know, I do hope that there keeps continuing to be more bands that you know make this you know in the same sim- world of music but you know at the end of the day as long as there's some guitars I, I don't care like you know, as long as guitar music is um still relevant and at the forefront you know and it doesn't get lost into the abyss of pop music and mumble rap then like I'm happy yeah. Well, shouldn't, I mean, if you grew up on skate videos, shouldn't you have become a punk rocker? Yeah. I used to love wearing my like Sex Pistols, God Save the Queen t shirt and Ramones and all that stuff. Yeah. I used to be obsessed. But um, I think just as I got older, I just got more interested in like, you know, Masters Apprentices and 13 Four Elevators and right. all that sort of more psychedelic rock um, stuff. But I guess that's just, comes with also you know dabbling with things uh, to make those <laughs> influences seem a lot cooler than other things at the time uh-huh. you know did Barrett was a big one like lots of things like that but um yeah obviously yeah anything that's related in the punk world and stuff can always be you know considered into the same realm and you know I feel like we've I'd love to try and do more punk sort of heavier upbeat rock stuff as well. Um, as, well there's yeah, your next Warlocks like, album. Psychedelic rock. That, yeah, like Rap Scallion's been real fun, you know, to yeah. do more that kind of, yeah, world of, of um, rock and roll. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like we're running out of ideas, though, with uh, <laughs> between the two bands, <laughs> what direction we're going <laughs> Well, I don't know about that. I mean, given the amount of stuff you churn out, as uh, it's it's, it's uh, it doesn't seem like you're ever going to run out of ideas. So you, you're after the the Gizzard shows, uh, you're staying over in North America, if I've got it right, to do Murloc stuff, right? To do a Murloc tour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you guys going to play the album in its entirety? Because it would seem to be something perfectly suited for that kind of an experience. Yeah, yeah, we played it the entirety the other night and mixed in a bunch of older stuff. Um, and that felt really good. So we'll probably just continue to do that and try and play a bunch of Bittersweet Demons as well because we never got to do that overseas. Um, so, yeah, it will sort of be a, be a mixed bag. You know, we've got like six albums now to our name. So it's going to be nice to rotate a few oldies, but um, I'm pretty keen to focus mainly on Rap Scallion. That's for sure because I feel like um, it's going to be – a really nice album that will translate live in a in a great way once we it, you know once people have listened to it you know had a good month or so to um let it all sink in and then we'll be able to yeah see see what people like more than others but yeah it was really hard to pick singles for rap scallion i feel like a lot of the songs are really strong um so, yeah. definitely yeah, no, it's it's front to back. It's a great piece of work. My compliments all the way through, you know. Thank you. Yeah, cheers.